This is a very common transformer core used in electronic devices. I also use it in most of my projects. For example, uh, here I have a 12 volt to 220 volt inverter with a power capacity of 1000 watts. The transformer used is the EE49 with a width of 49 millimeters. It has a fairly high efficiency, over 90% at full load. However, in today's video, I will show you a type of transformer core that is quite rare on the market. It is called an amorphous transformer, and I bought it from an online store in China for about $5 each. The typical material is an alloy of iron with boron, silicon, and phosphorus in the form of thin, e.g. 25 millimeters, foils rapidly cooled from the melt. These materials have high magnetic susceptibility, very low coercivity, and high electrical resistance. The high resistance and thin foils lead to low losses by eddy currents when subjected to alternating magnetic fields. You can see its structure is a ferrite coil made from a very thin strip of ferrite wound together. It's thinner than a strand of hair and extremely fragile. According to the manufacturer, the power capacity for one core ranges from 3.5 to 5 kilowatts, significantly larger than that of conventional transformers. I share the Gerber file of this project. You can download it and place an order with JLCPCB. Their PCBs have extremely good quality and very affordable prices. This is the soldering path of the chip. How would you route it? If the number of pins is low, you can route traces directly outwards. However, when there are many solder pads on the chip, it becomes difficult to do the fan out. So we drill vias to transfer the traces to other layers. Note that we first extend a trace from the pad before drilling the via. While routing becomes much simpler, you still need to route at least one trace from pad to via, so there can still be issues with pads being too dense or too numerous to route effectively. If we directly place the via directly on the pad, there's no need for additional trace before via. But this can lead to solder wicking away through the hole during soldering, causing defects or cold solder joints. Via in-pad technology addresses these issues. We still place the via on the pad, but then fill it with resin and plate it with copper. The surface shows almost no trace of this, and soldering is as reliable as with a regular pad, saving on routing, optimizing board size, and also enhancing thermal conduction. If you're looking to optimize your routing and save time, you can take advantage of free via in-pad service. Try it now and save time. This is the PCB of the step-up converter circuit. It has a design power capacity of 2 kilowatts. I will make two circuits and compare the efficiency between a conventional pulse transformer and an amorphous transformer core. First, I will solder the auxiliary components onto the circuit. This version is similar to my previous inverter circuits, which I explained in detail in a previous video, so I will fast forward through this process. Soldering components is really quite boring. I use IRF-260 MOSFETs for this project, each with a maximum current of 50 watts and a maximum voltage of 200 volts. They are very suitable for a 48 volt system. Eight MOSFETs can easily achieve 2 kilowatts at 48 volts. I use 450 volts 330 UF capacitors for the output. The output voltage will be set to around 380 volt DC. This is the power board as well as the control board for this project. I use the KAA3525 oscillator IC, which is very common and can be purchased from anywhere. Additionally, the aluminum heat sinks are indispensable. They help keep the temperatures of the MOSFETs and diodes within the permissible range.
Winding this toroidal transformer is also very simple. I use two parallel 1.2 millimeter copper wires. The ratio is four to 32, meaning we will have four plus four turns for the primary coil and 32 turns for the secondary coil. The output voltage is 380 volt DC. Since this is just an experiment, I will solder the transformer to the back of the board. In the near future, I will design a dedicated version for this toroidal transformer. Here, I am connecting this step-up circuit to my grid tie inverter. The goal is to enable the grid tie inverter to work even at night when there is no sunlight. This circuit will boost the 48 volt battery voltage to 400 volt DC for the grid tie inverter to operate. According to my calculations, the efficiency of the amorphous core will be about 2% higher than that of a conventional ferrite core. It's not a huge difference, but you might consider using this new material in your projects.